And so when people come in and say the FWC did a bad job or they didn't think about this or the science isn't there, tell them they're fucking liars. Straight up. Because you can't argue with the science here. It is so sound. And that's why these lawsuits are going to fall flat on their face when they when they come through. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, this has been, what, 20, 2015, right? So uh, that's when we had the last bear hunt. It was 2015. So yeah. we've been a decade without bear hunts in Florida, all because, you know, in my opinion, and, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, you know, shit hit the fan of the last bear hunt, and all of a sudden there was a lot more bears than they thought they were. And others, somebody said, oh, we got to pump the brakes now that we we may not have our numbers right. Um, I mean... I don't, I, I don't really agree with that statement. I don't. No, I don't, it's fine. Call me out like a dumbass. That's fine. People do it all the time. We're not well, doctors. You know, I, there's a lot of. Opinion. I'd be remiss if we didn't start with the black bear thing, um, especially you know on the heels of what happened yesterday. Kill them all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if you saw. I, 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 I shot a reel. I posted it. Have you seen the reel that I posted yet? Did you have a chance to look at that yet? No, I haven't seen it. Yeah, um, I got, so that came out yesterday. I was in meetings. Oscar was texting me and a bunch of other people and sending screenshots and like, it got approved, it got approved. And I'm like, oh my God, that's great. So I made a, just a regular, you know, social media post. I'm like, yeah, finally, you know, we're getting bear hunting again. And it's such a great thing. And oh my God, the hate I got from that really inspired me to, to cut a reel today. And I did. And I threw everybody under the fucking bus about the bad science. And the, you know, that, I think that's the part. The problem with it is, is these people think with emotion and they don't think with science. They, and they really have no fucking clue what's going on. And I gave it to everybody today. And a normal short for me is like 30, 45 seconds. Like I drug that on for three minutes. It was a giant rant. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, I was at the meeting yesterday as well. I've been I've been at all the meetings. Um, uh, I, I've been pretty involved with that process. Uh, so, you know, hearing that hearing that unanimous vote, I, it was a huge win. You know, definitely something to celebrate. So maybe I should grab some tequila. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, this has been, what, 20, 2015, right? So uh, that's when we had the last bear hunt. It was 2015. So yeah. we've been a decade without bear hunts in Florida, all because, you know, in my opinion, and and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, you know, shit hit the fan of the last bear hunt. And all of a sudden there was a lot more bears than they thought they were. And others, somebody said, Oh, we got to pump the brakes now that we, we may not have our numbers. Right. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I don't really agree with that statement. I don't No, I don't, it's fine. Call me out like a dumbass. That's fine. People do it all the time. We're not well, doctors. You know, I, there's a lot of opinions out there. Um, and, unfortunately a lot of them are not based in science and and also unfortunately that is the truth for both sides of the argument there's like you said there's like a lot of people that are really emotional about it and like oh my god we shouldn't hurt bears they're little teddy bears Some of that. you know there's those people but there's also in the hunting community there's a lot of people that just like they just have opinions on on how they think the population looks and what it's structured like and and you know how we should be managing it um, they don't understand the science. They don't know, you know, what the FWC scientists know. They don't know what I know. You know, I've read literally the majority of the black bear literature, um, not just Florida, but other states, too. You know, um, I have a pretty good handle on the science that's out there. And, and we really know a lot about our our population of bears here in Florida. Um, and the proposal that FWC put together, I mean. I'll go as far as to say it's it's like a masterpiece and people people might not agree with that, but I don't think they really understand like the politics that are involved in it. Um, you know, the way that they handled it, uh, the way that they addressed the concerns of the anti hunters, um, you know, to make this hunt as uh, palatable as possible for everybody uh, truly, you know, was like they did an incredible job. Like I was really impressed with them. So I, I think FWC deserves props on that. Like, you know, people give them a lot of hate, but they really did a great job with this thing. So to, to segue, you know, from that, so obviously my statement, you know, about there, there was more bears than, than we gave it credit for. What was, I mean, so what was the determining factor there? So then are you saying there wasn't as many bears? What, what was the, what was the culprit behind that? You know, you know, pump the brakes, stop to that initial bear season and the 10 years following to get to where we are now. Um, well, 
what brought that hunt to a screeching halt really like i mean there was a number of factors but one of the big factors was the lawsuit you know uh the anti-hunters sued the shit out of fwc um and and fwc like i mean even people at fwc have said this and i'm not going to drop any names um but they just didn't do a great job with the defense you know they they weren't prepared for that lawsuit and um you know, it just became such a political issue that, you know, the governor just kind of pulled the plug on and said, well, we're not touching this for now. You know, um, going into this one, they knew that that was going to happen. They knew that there was litigation coming and they've probably already received, you know, lawsuits in the mail since yesterday. Um, you know, people had them drafted up and ready to go, uh, you know, and, and the anti hunters were, you know, proudly bolstered, you know, like saying that that they had them ready to go um but fwc is prepared for it this time they have the scientific data they have the data analysis done they know exactly what the arguments are going to be and they they know exactly how to uh to debunk those arguments i didn't know did did you guys know anything about the the lawsuit i didn't that's that's no, actually I yeah me yeah, too i didn't even know there was a lawsuit well, and yeah, well, and and you're talking to three hunters here, and that just goes to sh- <laughs> a little bit to show about how little, you know, some of that stuff actually gets to the general or or what we intake. I guess you know we where people are very quick to to jump on social media and and see what's going on and and jump to conclusions, but there's always more to the story than meets the eye. Well, I think I think it's important to keep in mind that like people, you know, there's so much information coming out in you know social media on Instagram whatever, and people say things with a lot of confidence and it's easy to believe them when they say things that confidently. And that's what happens. People hear something, they start telling their friend with confidence because they heard it confidently. And before you know it, there's just all this misinformation out there and you know, nobody has the real story. Um, there's just not a lot of fact checking happening these days anymore. And I, I think it's still uh, pretty important to do that. Mark, Mark, as a, as a PhD, you know, with the whole bear thing, like just reading the comments and everything and stuff like you would think out of these less than 200 tags that have been allocated, you, you would think that they're going to, you know, like, they're just like, Oh, there's 200 bears left. You know, the state of Florida has just allowed them, you know, Floridians or out of state people to, to shoot all 200 bears. Yeah, so I can I can touch on that a little bit. Uh, so basically, uh, the four thousand number was from the last uh, count, right? The last census. And there's really two types of data that FWC uses to estimate our our bear population. One, they use these like hair corrals, and this is like a really expensive study. But unfortunately, bears are really cryptic animals. So in order to get a good count on them, like it, it takes a lot of money. So they put these hair corrals out where when the bears come in, their hair gets stuck in basically barbed wire. They take those hair samples, they do genetic analysis on it so that they can identify the exact bear that was in that area. They put these all over different areas. And um, that way they know that they're not recounting the same bear, right? Because you go driving through the woods, like, oh, there's a bear. And then you come through the next day and you're like, oh, there's a bear. Did you just see two bears or is it the same bear, you know? So they have to do this genetic analysis to make sure that they're not recounting the same bear. So that's how they, they, they can use that data to really get a good understanding of what the population looks like. Now, they can only do that study once every uh, 10, 10 to 12 years because they need, first of all, money. It's expensive. To, second, um, they need a full generation to pass before they do it because otherwise you're just recounting bears you counted the last time. Um, and so they want to count sort of the next generation to see, like, has the population increased or decreased with the next po- uh, generation? Uh, so that's that's one of the ways that they get that data. And and that's one of the things that the anti-hunters keep saying. They're like, oh, well, the last time they got data was 10 years ago. So it's outdated and we don't know what the population looks like right now, which is bullshit. It's it's really it's people that don't understand how data and how science works. That's just one part of the story. The other part of the story are studies that they do in between where they're looking at mortality rates, they're looking at survival rates, they're looking at birth rates. Um, and all of these things. Um, and from those things, they can build models. So they'll take those t- every 10 year data sets and build models that show growth or 
decline in different areas based on these other studies that they're doing. So we actually have a really good idea of what that population looks like. But we know that since the last count, which was in 2015, and it was about 4,000 bears, we know that the population has increased significantly. Um, the models have showed us that. In fact, some of the models indicate there might be twice as many bears by now. Um, but to be as conservative as possible, we're building our quotas off of the old numbers. We know that there's more bears, but we're still going to use those old numbers because we want to be as conservative as possible. Because again, this hunt needs to be palatable for the people that are against it. They need to be able to look at what FWC is doing and say, okay, they're being really careful about this. They're going about this in a smart way. Um, and so that's that's what they did there. And so that 187 bears, um, the way they come up, I, I don't know if you guys want to know all these details, but I'm just going to say it anyway. You, sure. you can cut it out if you want. The way they come up Hit with it. that 187 uh, bears is basically they look at the population. They look at the population growth rate. So we know the growth rate, right? Um, and then they they make a few assumptions. Assumptions that we also know are never going to be met. The first being that every single bear that's going to be harvested is female. Okay. So that's assumption number one, because females are the only half of the population that actually affect growth or decline, right? Male, you can have one male bear impregnate 20 females. Um, so bears are not really a hot commodity in terms of population growth, but females really are. So, so every all these numbers are based on females. So assumption one, Every harvested bear is a female. Assumption number two, uh, there's going to be a 100% success rate. Um, and then there's a third assumption, which I can't think of right now, but it'll come to me in a sec. Uh, then what they do is they look at known mortality rates. So we're talking about bears that get hit by cars, bears that maybe have to be shot because they're becoming a nuisance or, you know, whatever. They find a dead bear somewhere, it gets reported. So all these bears they know have died. They then take those numbers and they they try to figure out from the models, how many females can we remove from this population to make the growth rate zero? Not negative, but zero. So it stays exactly the same. And then with all of those assumptions in there, you know that that, that growth rate is going to stay positive, right? Because like we're not going to kill all females. and you know, not everybody's going to be successful. So that's where that number comes from. They go, okay, let's, I'm just making up a number here. Let's say that we can take 300 females out of the population and, and have there be no growth, right? So it stays exactly the same. But we also know that 113 bears got hit by cars this year, or, or they're expecting 113 to be hit this year because that's what was hit last year. There's 187 bears left. That's the quota. So, again, they're assuming if 187 bears are actually killed and all 187 of them are female, then the population will stay the same. And then, this is, this is how conservative this is. There's so many layers to this. Then on top of that, they said, we're going to make the hunt season be in December because in December most of the cubs and females will already be denned up for hibernation. So there's really going to be a lot more males walking around during the season. And they're allowing feeding stations, which allows hunters to be more selective and really pay attention, see if it's a big male, you know, boar bear and harvest a boar. They're also allowing hounding, you know, hunting with dogs which again allows them to tree the bear, get a good look at it, decide is this a male or a female so that people can let females go. So we have methods in place that are going to reduce the number of females that are harvested, but the quota is based on all females being harvested. So we know like with relative certainty that even if everybody is successful, the population will continue to grow. And so when people come in and say the FWC did a bad job or they didn't think about this or the science isn't there, tell them they're f***ing liars. Straight up. Because you can't argue with the science here. It is so sound. 
And that's why these lawsuits are going to fall flat on their face when they, when they come through. Well, that makes great sense to me. Yeah, yeah. For Sounds sure. like the FWC wants my 250 bucks when I pull this tag. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and that's the other side of it. We want this to be palatable for, for everybody, including people that are, that are against it. So the more money that we can make with this that can be reallocated into bear research and conservation, the more people are going to be okay with it, you know? So, so yeah, there's an opportunity here for FWC to make a lot of money that can be used for, uh, for bear conservation. And that's the point. That's, that's how the North American model of conservation works, you know? And they're, they're, that's they're exactly sticking, how it works. Yeah. They're, they're sticking to it. They're doing exactly what their job is, you know, designed to do. So like, you know, I hate to be like a, a fangirl here, but like, FWC is kicking ass on this one. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I, listen, I'm I'm all for, you know, especially with the tag situation. Like, it's just going to, everybody's going to apply for a tag, especially if there's only, it's like Kentucky without tags, right? Oh, you know, yeah. There's X amount that we have, especially for out-of-state residents, and then residents get 90% of them. Everybody puts in for an elk tag. Guess what's going to happen with bears? The second it's available, I'm putting in for a bear tag. Yeah, I, I'm definitely applying. I mean, I've put so much time into trying to get this thing across the finish line. Like it'd be kind of crazy if I didn't, but I can tell you right now, the last time we did this hunt in 2015, there's 180,000 hunters in Florida and 3,700 bought a tag for a hundred dollars. And it was guaranteed that you were getting a tag, you know, like you just, you just bought it and it was a hundred bucks and you had a tag. So when you say the statement, like, Oh, everybody's going to put in for this. It's not true. A lot of people won't like a lot of people will either feel like, oh, this is just a money grab. I'm not, you know, I'm not giving FWC shit. There's also people that are like, I'm not lucky enough to win. I'm not going to put into it, um, you know, and then there's people that are going to throw a crap load of money into it. But I'm just I'm just going to say this, like if you care about conservation, if you care about hunting, if you care about the animals that we hunt, put in, put as much money into it as you you know, feel comfortable doing like, you're, you know, don't go broke doing it. But if you don't put money into this, then FWC doesn't have the funding that they need to manage, you know, the stuff that we love. So spend your money. It's a good, it's a good place to spend your money. 